Hello and welcome. My name is Biagio Mazza. I am pastoral associate here at St. Sabinas in Belton, Missouri, and I want to welcome you to another Do You Know series question. Today's question is, do you know the significance of the Feast of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ, uh, what's traditionally known as Corpus Christi? Uh, in order to understand the Feast, it's good to just do a bit of historical backdrop. The feast surfaced at a time when priests had appropriated all the ministries of the liturgy. They were all focused on the priest who was saying mass with his back to the people and, and in Latin, a language that most people did not understand. And so as a result of that too, what happened is people were less and less participating in the liturgy and therefore less and less receiving communion. And what developed was this notion of what came to be known as ocular communion where you gain grace not by receiving the host, but by actually looking at the host. And so the Feast of Corpus Christi, benediction, 40 hours, and all these other devotions of adoration of the Eucharist were coming out of a lack of participation on the people for not receiving communion or not going up to participate in the Mass. And so as a result, Corpus Christi became the way of celebrating the presence where more and more people could actually look at the host that would be paraded through the streets and so on so that people could adore and venerate it. Um, and so as a result of that, what started to happen is uh, the, the focus almost exclusively came to be called the Corpus Christi, which is the body of Christ. With Vatican II, we have a restoration of the fullness of the symbol of the Eucharist, which includes not just the bread, but actually the, 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 uh, the wine as well. And as a result of that, the feast name was changed to the uh, feast of the most holy body and blood of Christ, so that we had the fullness of the symbol uh, uh, with regards to the Eucharistic presence. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, um, Vatican II expanded Eucharistic presence by claiming that Christ was present not only in the species, but that Christ was present as well in the assembly, in the actual word that was being proclaimed, as well as in the ministers that were leading us in the celebration. Um, two issues always surface with regards to this feast, and that has to do with who, are the, who actually believes in the real presence? Which Christian denominations believe in the real presence? And the second issue always focuses on how is Christ present in the, in the elements of the species of bread and wine? Uh, let's tackle the first one with regards to which denominations believe in real presence. When it comes to Christians, uh, there's a continuum uh, that uh, is established with regards to real presence. And the continuum on one extreme is the full, complete, total, and real, substantial presence of Christ uh, to the other end of the continuum where Eucharist is merely a symbolic remembrance of the events of the Last Supper. Uh, in the Catholic tradition, we believe in the full, complete, real, total, and substantial presence of Christ, but so do, so do, so do many other Christian denominations. Uh, Anglicans, Episcopals, Lutherans, Methodists believe in real presence. They just believe and articulate that real presence differently than the way Catholics do. We Catholics buy into or accept the transubstantiation, the changing of the actual substances of bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ, while the actual external dimensions remain the same. It tastes like bread, it, it uh, smells and uh, tastes like wine as well. Uh, However, uh, most Protestants do not buy into transubstantiation, but they do believe in real presence. Um, Bap most Baptists, the Evangelicals, and the Reformed tradition do not. They, they actually see this primarily as a symbolic remembrance of the events of the Last Supper. So with regards to real presence, it's important to remember that most Christians do believe in the real presence. They just believe it differently from the way we Catholics believe it. Many of them don't focus on transubstantiation. They focus primarily on the mystery that Christ is present there. 
And so, and the other issues having to do with uh, how is Christ really present in the elements? Christ is present in a sacramental way. It's the risen Christ that is present, not the physical Christ. We believe as Catholics that Christ is fully, completely, totally, and substantially present in the elements, but not in a physical way, always in a sacramental risen Christ mode. So. I hope this has been informative for you and that, that it's helped you clarify some of the issues with regards to real presence and relationship to our Christian brothers and sisters, and that hopefully you will come back again to more Do You Know questions that hopefully will inform your journey and your faith formation on your journey in relationship with Christ. Thank you very much.